serious. A man on the run from police. Put your hand behind your back. They're shocked by what they find. Are you kidding me? Boom's causing havoc, but there's a big price to pay. $884 to pick it up. And this man's T-shirt says it all. And you have the audacity to turn around and tell him to stick it up me. You signed the tow book and that for him? I've got a pursuit I've got to go to. Word of a drama unfolding on the streets of Melbourne has just come over the comms, and Senior Constable Russell Warner is rushing to the aid of fellow officers. You five, he's almost so uh, run the members over, uh, and they approached the window. Uh, he told them he was suspended and then he's taken off and must run them over. A routine pullover has now turned into a pursuit involving a number of police vehicles. Just approaching coming like, he's being very cautious by the road users, slow right down between 30 k's an hour. For a pursuit, this is quite refreshing behaviour. Especially since the driver's in control of a souped up vehicle. But he still won't stop for the cops. We're better off going straight through. Russell is quickly approaching the oncoming ute. And the net is closing in on the offender. Put your hand behind your back. Can I sit him up? With the driver of the ute apprehended, Russell begins to get details of how this event unfolded. The pursuit started after the guys had pulled him over. Local Werribee unit was going up and just said, look, mate, your rego's suspended. He's gone, yeah, I know. So is my licence. They've said, can you switch your car off? Just taken off. Gone. Crazy, just running over a suspended rego and a suspended licence. But as Russell and other officers are about to find out, there's a frightening reason why this man did a runner. Are you kidding me? It's late Friday night, a popular time for hoons to run them up, but catching them is all about timing. And tonight, the timing of leading senior constable Ash Bowden and constable Damien O'Brien is perfect. Oblivious to the unmarked police car, the driver of the ute has performed a foolish manoeuvre coming around a corner. Oh, he's sideways. The driver's going like the clappers. He's way in the distance. He's going left. And either his taillights aren't working, or he's switched them off to elude Ash. There he is. Finally realising he's not going to avoid the police, the driver pulls over. But Ash is far from impressed. He just did a mighty big burnout right past me at the Shell Servo. Do you recall that? Yeah, I know. I was going a bit fast. Going a bit fast. Didn't look like you tried to slow down in a hurry, though. Fair analogy? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, no. So it is your car, is it? It is my car, sir. Yes? Yeah. Speak up, mate. I can't hear. Yes. Yes. Lovely. All right, at this stage, your car's been impounded for a month, mate. What you just did there was stupid, reckless. I can go on and on and on. <laughs> Wet weather is causing havoc on the roads, and Senior Constable Meredith Grisold has just been notified of another incident on a suburban Melbourne street. Uh, I just had a call uh, to, to attend a uh, single vehicle, Code 12, uh, into a uh, fence and house. As she negotiates traffic on her way to the crash site, more news of the driver comes over the radio. Directed to a one of your yeah, funny you should mention that. We had a couple of jobs for an erratic driver the other day with him involved, so um, this will be interesting. Thank you. With a history of erratic driving and the fact the vehicle is severely damaged, it's amazing the driver is still standing. Oh, yeah, it's like dealings with before. Yeah. How you going, mate? Got your licence on you? It's taking you a while to get your licence out. What's going on? No, I haven't got too much stuff in here. Yeah, been checked out by the ambulance yet? Yeah. You have, and you're all right? You're not injured? No. All right, being the driver of a motor vehicle and being involved in a motor vehicle collision, I now require you to undergo a preliminary breath test. 
Yep. All right, yeah, just right. one big breath into the straw for me, thanks. That's it. The test right, comes up negative, but it's obvious that something's wrong. In my opinion, you appear to be affected by something other than alcohol. I now require you to accompany me to the Epping Police Station for the purpose of a drug impairment assessment. Are you prepared to accompany me? I'm just trying to a moment at the moment, but... No, no, listen to what I'm saying to you. In my opinion, you appear to be affected by something other than alcohol. If I was... Hang on a minute, let me finish. I now require you to accompany me to the Epping Police Station yeah. for the purpose of a drug impairment assessment. Are you prepared to accompany me? What you just did there was stupid, reckless, and I can go on and on and on. But maybe when you go to court, you can explain yourself to the magistrate there. In Frankston, Ahoon has been caught in action by leading senior constable Ash Bowden and constable Damien O'Brien. Do you have any questions at this stage? No. No? No. Oh. Just sit tight, I'm going to do a few checks. I'll be back to speak to you a little bit further, all right? This gentleman's decided to come out, basically do a left-hand turn around the Shell service station. Unfortunately for him, we are sitting there in an unmarked police car, and he has done probably one of the biggest burnouts I've seen in a long time and he was thoroughly enjoying himself whilst he was doing that burnout so his car is gone for a month. He runs some checks for us. Yep. On it. While checks of his licence come up clean, Ash is concerned about the other issue he spotted during the intercept. No, no, his actual taillights don't work. Reckless driving and faulty taillights. So what does this driver have to say for himself? Not that there was really any doubt about it, but I've spoken to the senior sergeant and explained what you've done. Yeah. And he's pretty happy and he's um, authorised me to seize the car for one month. And I noticed too, after obviously when you were going down Cranny Road after you did your burnout, you aware of the fact you got no taillights? I have taillights. Pardon? You want to see them? Well, I'm pretty sure. Or if you didn't have taillights, why did you turn your headlights off after you did the burnout then? I oh, no, I shot myself. Pardon? I shot myself. Because you saw me sitting at the shell server? No, I saw you come flying up behind me. I was like, You actually turn your headlights off. I knew you were coming after me. I knew you were going to get me. Well, it's good that you knew I was going to get you. But there's still no need to, obviously, on an 80k an hour road, turn your headlights off, is there? No, yeah, it was an accident. It was an accident? Yeah. Hardly an accident, mate. Senior Constable Russell Warner and fellow Highway Patrol members have brought a 10-minute pursuit through the streets of Melbourne to a safe end. The pursuit started after the guys had pulled them over. They said, can you switch your car off? Just taken off. Gone. Crazy, just running over a suspended rego and a suspended licence. But there appears to be more to this guy than just traffic offences. Taser? Are you kidding me? Mobile phone taser. We've got a mobile phone. It's actually a taser. Something we're seeing more and more of nowadays, which is a scary thing, because we're the only ones supposed to have tasers. And half of them haven't got them yet. They are powerful and they are a really bad weapon. Have you got anything else on you, mate? No. Have you had any drugs or alcohol or anything? I'll be all right, still, yeah. What time do you have I? I'm going to get before you find Do you understand what's going on? Are you fully yeah. comprehensive of everything that's going on? Yeah. All right. He's been fully searched. Yeah. Yeah. Things are looking dodgier by the second. It'd be interesting to see what the full story is when they actually get him back to the police station to start speaking to him and do their checks. And... But police haven't finished with the driver yet, and it seems he's got even more to hide. I now require you to accompany me to the Epping Police Station yeah. for the purpose of a drug impairment assessment. Are you prepared to accompany me? Senior Constable Meredith Grisold is dealing with a driver she believes to be under the influence of drugs. The, the refuse? Yeah. You are going to refuse? Oh. He's refused to accompany me back to the police station for a drug impairment assessment. I believe that he's affected by something other than alcohol. Um, with that, that carries an up to two year loss of licence and up to a $2,000 fine as well and an appearance at court. While the driver may be refusing to cooperate, 
he's willing to tell Meredith his version of events. I just come around the roundabout. They come from that guy's milk bar over there. Just got past, like, near Aldi's, and then got, like, a whip pack and it's just... Bang. How fast are we travelling? No more than, like, 70 k's, 80 k's. 70 or 80? Yeah, max. That's maximum if you push that. Yeah. And it's just, like, slid and I've just locked on the brakes and, like... So you've gone right across, across the median like strip? Yeah. Yeah, the driver's claim to hitting a wet patch, well, the entire road is wet. Um, he stated his speed was between uh, 70 and 80. Well, Dalton Road's a 70 kilometre speed limit. I query his speed. I believe he may have been travelling a little bit quicker than that because he's done quite a bit of damage to a couple of trees over there and uh, to this fence here on Dalton Road. And the case against the driver is about to get worse. All right, over the last couple of days, we've actually had reports of you driving this car very, very erratically. Have you had any drugs or alcohol or anything? I'll be honest, yeah, yeah. In West Melbourne, Senior Constable Russell Warner has helped to detain this man who did a runner after a routine traffic stop. Do you understand what's going on? Like, is, yeah. Fully comprehensive of everything that's going on? Right. He's been fully searched. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You got any drugs on your own? While the driver is stating he's clean, the police searching his vehicle have made a number of interesting finds. How many phones do you find? Heaps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mobile phones. Nice little notebooks. Scales. And that's the taser. You can see just the two diodes at the end or whatever you call them that we don't even try and operate it in case we end up zapping ourselves. I found eight phones. I found two sets of scars, which is used to use for weighing drugs. Bits of other pieces of drug paraphernalia. While no actual drugs are found, further investigation will be needed to determine if this driver is in fact a dealer. Good job all round. No one got hurt. You know, no police cars <laughs> were hurt either. But uh, every time you catch these guys or girls after the shoots, a good thing. Job well done. If you didn't have tail lights, why'd you turn your headlights off after you did the burnout then? Leading senior constable Ash Bowden and constable Damien O'Brien have intercepted two hoons revved up to hit the clubs on a Friday night. Uh, it was an accident. It was an accident? Yeah. Hardly an accident, mate, but uh, you can tell the magistrate that, all right? Just sit tight, I'll do that, those, those reports and we'll have a look over your car, all right? Uh, um, how long is it going to take? But with charges relating to the Hoon Act hanging over his head, this lad is going nowhere fast. Now, this is the paperwork to pick it up, OK? The only downfall for yourself is you have to pay $884. And they don't accept checks, OK? I don't do so, checks. So keep your checkbook at home, all right? Oh. In relation, obviously, what's happened tonight, what's going to happen is I'm going to prepare a brief of evidence to send you to court. It's the end of the road for this hoon, and he begins the first of many walks home. A young driver on his P plates and a powerful utility. Um, got his mate in the car, same age, just probably showing off. Um, you can see that it obviously might have cost him a fair bit of money to get the car out of the impound tonight. Could have cost him a hell of a lot more if he had have come unstuck, hurt himself or someone else. Travelling? No more than like 70 k's, 80 k's. Senior Constable Meredith Crisold is investigating a crash after a car smashed into a fence. The big question is, was speed a factor? All right, over the last couple of days, we've actually had reports of you driving this car very, very erratically. One was in Epping, the other was through the car park of the Westfield Shopping Centre. Uh, no. I ain't going to wish to watch something at all. Meredith can't nail him on that, but there's plenty of evidence surrounding today's smash. He's going pretty fast and he uh, lost control coming up there and went across the, the uh, medium strip in the middle 
and I missed, missed me by an inches and I was lucky to avoid the collision. I was mainly worried about myself not getting hit head on and the other people on the road behind me. I've actually had dealings with the driver before. He came off the on-ramp at Cooper Street onto the Hume Freeway. Don't move! Stay where you are! Put yourself the person. Gave some story that he was allegedly towing someone out of the bottom of the grassed area there, which we couldn't prove or disprove. Oh, we're seeing someone lose it in here. So I thought I'd reverse up and help him. All right, OK, settle down. So where are they? Gone. Just went. But crashing his car isn't the only issue facing this driver, as Meredith has one more piece of bad news. Um, I've done a registration check and the registration's coming up as suspended. Uh, therefore, your car is unregistered. So what's your reason for driving an unregistered motor vehicle actually, today? Actually, it shouldn't be, actually. Because you've paid the registration. Yeah, but it's been... Sus it's, it's current, but it's been yeah. suspended. And so your reason... Any reason for driving an unregistered car today? No. No, no reason? Oh. Uh, no. So you understand from here, I'll yeah, serve yeah, some yeah, paperwork yeah, 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 on you yeah. in regards yeah. to going to court. In a final blow, the smashed car is loaded up, while the driver salvages whatever he can from what's turned out to be a wreck of a day. Sergeant Helen Polk and Senior Constable Peter Shrimpton are out on patrol when they spot an elderly gentleman living on the edge. Quite clearly a pedestrian crossing is advisable. Use a crossing next time, you get killed, look! Stand by, go grab him. Sergeant Helen Polk and Senior Constable Peter Shrimpton have just spotted a pedestrian dicing with death. Use a crossing next time. You get killed. Look. Uh, oh. Two small words, but ones that could leave some big regrets. T-shirt's appropriate. Grumpy old man. How rude. Oh, I apologise sincerely. There is a, t a crossing. You were less than oh, three I metres. I and you have but it's a bit late to be sorry now, mate. Abusing a police officer is never going to go down well. Oh, I thought it was a taxi. Oh. I honestly... I, I do, anyway. mate. I can only apologise. I can't do anything else sincerely. It was a complete so error on my So you just part. abuse before you look. Is that commonplace? Mistaking a cop car for a taxi is pretty unusual. You open your gob before you look. And letting fly at passing traffic is wrong regardless. In this case, I'm sorry. And the crossing, sir. The amount of people that are killed on this road and seriously injured and end up half a k down the road in the Alfred Hospital when you could have used the crossing. The crossing was full. People had pushed the button, all you had to do was wait. So have a seat on the bench and I'll be back with you. So it's now up to Helen as to whether the grumpy old man has to cough up for one ticket or two. Look, I don't care what he says to me or anyone says to me, um, as long as it's not overly offensive and can be heard by the general public. So I'll, I'll just ignore what he told me. And uh, so he's getting a ticket for... Um, not using the pedestrian crossing. Grumpy old man, how good's that T-shirt? I thought it was a taxi, because I was real close up, you know? I thought they were on top of me, you know? Obviously, you wouldn't do it if you recognised who it was, unless, unless you were drunk at this time of the day, but... <laughs> no, 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 a mistake on my part. You just get a bit impatient when, uh, when you get older, that's it. All right, $70 ticket. Now, you must use the crossing. All right, that was just downright dangerous. You were straddling four lanes there, Doc. And I'll okay. ignore what you said. Uh, you must admit, I'd have to be pretty thick if I was stone cold sober at this time of the day to abuse a police officer. <laughs> oh, come on. Well... Come on. <laughs> anyway, I, take, I, ta I take that lightheartedly anyway. That's the luck of the game. All right. I, I don't see you again. Yeah. Look after your health and stay safe. Good on you. That's the story, mate. <laughs> I'll cop 70 bucks. They'll let me pay it off for 10 bucks a week. Can't complain. Anyway, that's it. 
Have a good day. The grumpy old man, the grumpy old copper, so uh, all good. It's lighthearted, and he apologised. I didn't take it personally. Hopefully he'll learn his lessons. 70 bucks. He will use a crossing next time, I'm sure. Thank you.